Thank you very much, uh, uh, dear colleagues. Um, I just want to give uh, a picture so that you understand really what this one means. I remember beginning of this year, the Secretary General in his statement, in his policy statement, indicated that there are 52 countries that were either highly in, in debt distress or they are highly at risk. And among these countries, close to half of them were in Africa. But this is happening for the first time where there is no solution. They accumulated debt because of the COVID-19, where they had to borrow to save lives. This was followed by the climate change, which had a huge, huge impact. And then the high cost, of course, of food, the high cost of energy, and the high inflation. It's a very bad combination. And this is uh, 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 happening at the time where, when I, when I say where there is no solution. Initially, when there was Paris Club dominating in terms of lending, it was much easier. But now there are many stakeholders uh, as lenders, including private lenders. And it has become very difficult for all of them to come to one room to discuss about what to do about debt relief for the countries which are really suffering. Some countries are really uh, spending uh, for debt payment as much as recurrent expenditure. Others more than uh, the spending they do on health and education. And the reserves of the central banks which are really paying in hard currency are declining to the extent that they cannot be able to support the financial sector for the private sector who are importing goods from outside the country. And this is very serious for countries like uh, uh, African countries where you still import a lot of capital goods because you are building infrastructure for the first time. And none of the materials are made in Africa. In most cases, they come from outside. So this becomes a very, very serious problem because you have inflation, you have high debt, you have less fiscal space, and yet there is no reserves even to support that. And there is no solution because the common framework that was put there by G20 is no longer working. It's not supporting anyone, and there is no solution in sight. So it's a very, very serious situation, and this is happening when actually the resources that are concessional in nature have declined significantly. And some of the countries are not even eligible to borrow any more money uh, at all. So this is really a very serious situation. So today's implementation uh, lab presents a really key opportunity to explore strategies for unlocking predictable, affordable, and sustainable financing for climate action and SDGs. Uh, climate, debt, and development, uh, they are closely intertwined. Projections of the Economic Commission for Africa, they show that African regions could face the GDP losses up to 15%. It's usually on average 5 to 6%, but some countries are going up to 15% by 2050 due to global warming. Meanwhile, high debt servicing costs constrain these countries from making a critical investment in climate adaptation and resilience to, mitigation, uh, to mitigate some of the losses that they incur. A recently, of course, published a uh, report which I believe most of you have read by the G20 expert group. It is missed that by 2030, developing countries will require an annual increment investment of 1.8 trillion US dollars for climate action and 1.2 trillion uh, US dollars for achieving the SDGs. 